What about costume channels? Well, costume channels are more like surgeon channels. Have a major alpha polypeptide subunit that forms the pore of these channels, with each with four repeats. And like surgeon channels, these alpha subunits associate with 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 accessory or auxiliary subunits that in the, in this case are called beta, alpha two, delta, and gamma. And uh, as you can see in this slide as well is that uh, different uh, names for these uh, so, uh, calcium channels uh, L type, PQ type, N type, R type and T type uh, these names came from electrophysiological and functional studies and, and then later on with the cloning of the subunits encoders the alpha subunits of these channels uh, it received names such as CAV 1.2, 1.3 2.1 and so on and sometimes also alpha 1c 1d and so on and likewise for uh, for the uh, accessory subunits there are some diversity in terms of alpha 2 delta 1 alpha 2 delta 2 alpha 2 delta 3 beta 1 1b 2a and so on each one of these polypeptides are encoded by a different gene The voltage gate calcium channels are activated by a depolarization stimuli. What makes very interesting about these channels is, is that there is this large calcium influx through these channels. And calcium is a very important ion because not only calcium can evoke electrical changes in the, in the cell, but also calcium influx and the buildup of calcium inside of cell can trigger a diversity of second messenger cascade and therefore initiate a metabolic change in the cell. These, these voltage gated calcium channels are fine tuned to either res respond to a very weak or strong depolarization depending on the calcium channel that's involved and uh, the major types again that we're going to be talking about are the L, P, Q, N, and T type. The R type is, is a relatively rare type of calcium channel and we're not going to be talking too much about these channels here. All these voltage gated calcium channels have this kind of structure. It has the main alpha subunit that forms uh, the pore forming subunit and also contains the S1 to S6 domains, the voltage sensor, and so on. Uh, but also, you can see that that's relatively complex gamma subunit associated with the alpha, and also the beta subunit and the alpha 2 delta subunit. Alpha 2 delta received this name because initially we thought the alpha 2 delta was two different subunits, one alpha 2 and another one is a delta. But now we know that alpha 2 delta is a single subunit encoded by a, a single gene. Uh, there are some diverse there, but uh, uh, alpha 2 delta is, is considered an uh, 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 accessory subunit. Uh, some of the functions of this uh, subunits are to modulate the gating of these channels. So, depending on the association of what subtype of alpha 2 delta associates of alpha 1, uh, the calcium channel may open at, at the either more hyperpolarized or more depolarized main potentials. The beta subunits have a very important role as a membrane trafficking component. So it, it works almost as a chaperone to take the newly synthesized alpha subunits all to the way to the plasma membrane where it's going to be located. If we use a, a sequence homology to divide these different types of calcium channels and, and the, the genes that encode the alpha subunits of these calcium channels, you get a diagram like this 
and you can see that uh, the L type has at least four uh, different types of alpha subunits. The P, Q only one, curve 2.1, the N type just one, curve 2.2. Uh, why the, the T type is encoded can be encoded by three different types of genes depending on the cell that's expressing these T type calcium channels. And uh, you, you can also say that uh, the L and PQ, N and R are the high voltage activated channels. So it takes a lot of depolarization to open this. Uh, calcium channels while the t-type can be open at a more hyperpolarized membrane potential so it's a low threshold for a, uh, activation low voltage activated Like we said before, an interesting feature of these channels is, is that allows the permeation of calcium. So calcium is kept at tight control inside of the cells by a variety of mechanisms that involve calcium sequestered proteins, involve calcium pumps, involve sodium calcium exchangers, and so on. So the levels of intracellular calcium inside of cells are usually kept in the low nanomolar range while the calcium outside of the cell is usually in the range of a millimolar range. So there is a tremendous electrochemical gradient for calcium influx when these calcium channels open. Uh, this, the calcium influx to the cells uh, can then serve as a chemical messenger to, uh, to pro evoke a number of, of of physiological changes such as contraction in skeletal muscle. Also it can uh, evoke secretion of neurotransmitters in the presynaptic terminals and also in some cells the influx of calcium can activate transcriptional factors that will ultimately lead to gene transcription. So calcium influx via calcium channels can be involved in some forms of, synapt uh, of uh, neuronal plasticity via activation of gene transcription. Again, this slide depicts the different types of calcium channels and the important aspect, again, is to emphasize the threshold, literally high threshold for activation of the L-type PQ and N type and relatively low threshold for activation of the T type calcium channels. The L type, which is dihydropyridine sensitive, has a high threshold for activation, long last openings, slow inactivation, and, and in muscle there are the voltage sensors to elicit excitation contraction coupling. In heart cells, beta adrenergic receptors stimul stimulate the activity of, of this type of L-type calcium channels to enhance cardiac contractility and excitability. Also, the L-type calcium channels are widely expressed uh, in neuronal cells and uh, they involve in some forms of synaptic plasticity. The PQ type are, are also found widely expressed uh, uh, in the CNS. They're involved in the fast enough transmission, gene expression and plasticity. And uh, this type of channels are involved in synaptic release of neurotransmitters uh, because they're closely associated with this snare protein complex. Uh, also very prominently, these PQ type calcium channels are found in presynaptic terminals in the cerebellum. N type calcium channels, they are also found in, in widely expressed in the brain and they express sympathetic in the central nervous system. And N type calcium channels 
are very important for uh, nail transmitter release. The, the T type Gaussian channels are, are quite different than the previous types because they can be activated by relatively small depolarization and, and, and have this very transient uh, behavior. And, and uh, we think that this type of, of channels can be important for the burst activity in some dynamic cells and, and perhaps in some other pacemaker cells.